Without a doubt, Peter Jackson's The Lord of the Rings trilogy is a masterpiece. The film is clearly a labour of love and has stood the test of time. However, the journey to make the movie trilogy was a long and difficult one, and the masterpiece we got almost never was. This was because of the infamous producer, Harvey Weinstein. In today's video, I am going to discuss how The Lord of the Rings was being developed by Miramax, Weinstein's company, and how his involvement almost derailed the entire project. Peter Jackson had read the Lord of the Rings novels when he was a teenager, and had also seen the Ralph Bakshi animated movie. Jackson loved the story, and said to himself that it would make a great live-action movie one day. Jackson had made several films before working on the movie Heavenly Creatures. Heavenly Creatures was picked up by Miramax, and after that deal, Miramax signed Peter Jackson to a first-look deal. This meant that any project Jackson was working on had to be shown to Miramax and Harvey Weinstein first. If Weinstein passed on the project, Jackson was free to take his ideas to another studio. In between finishing Heavenly Creatures and starting pre-production on The Lord of the Rings, Jackson had made the movie The Frighteners and had also attempted to do a remake of King Kong. At the time, Jackson wasn't able to secure the film rights for King Kong at Universal, but would eventually go on to make the movie in 2005. With the first look deal at Miramax, Jackson had approached Weinstein and asked about doing an adaptation of The Lord of the Rings. It wasn't clear to Jackson at the time who owned the rights to The Lord of the Rings, but Weinstein investigated this, discovering the rights belonged to Soul Sense, who had purchased the rights from United Artists. Weinstein was able to secure a deal with Sense, and Jackson was able to start development on the movies. Jackson had wanted to shoot the movies back to back, and had initially envisioned doing three movies, the first movie actually adapting The Hobbit, and the next two movies adapting The Lord of the Rings. This was clearly too big a task for Miramax to throw money behind, and Weinstein said that he would bankroll two movies to be shot back to back, but only adapting The Lord of the Rings books and not The Hobbit. Ultimately, Jackson was able to develop The Lord of the Rings into the screenplays for two movies. However, Weinstein kept getting nervous about the project, and insisted that they should only do one movie instead of the two. Jackson had hoped that they would do the first movie, and if it was a success, the second movie would get greenlit. But Weinstein was not happy with this. He had spent a lot of money on the project already and needed cameras to start rolling in order for him to make money back. He wanted an adaptation of the entire Lord of the Rings novel told in one movie. Weinstein had reportedly spent around $20 million in obtaining the rights to the Lord of the Rings as well as bankrolling the early development on the film. Jackson was devastated by this demand and was given the ultimatum by Weinstein that if he couldn't adapt it into a single movie, he would find someone who would. Weinstein had even looked at hiring Quentin Tarantino to direct the movie had Jackson not been able to achieve the impossible demand. Weinstein had made several suggestions to the script to shorten it to work in a single movie. These reportedly included killing off one of the hobbits, cutting out Saruman, merging the realms of Rohan and Gondor, and making the character of Eowyn Boromir's sister. Weinstein also demanded that they cut out all of the events that take place in the village of Bree, and remove the Battle of Helm's Deep, which to this day stands the test of time as one of the great cinematic battles ever put on the big screen. To his credit, Jackson did make an attempt to make these cuts to the script, but ultimately couldn't make it work. Jackson then went back to Weinstein and levelled with him. He said it was impossible to adapt this story into a single film. After the meeting with Weinstein, Jackson was very disappointed and assumed that it was the end of his journey in adapting The Lord of the Rings. It was reportedly then Jackson's agent who contacted Weinstein and expressed the chance to take the project to another studio. 
Jackson's agent expressed how much of a passion project this was for the director, and that he really wanted to see it through correctly. Despite having spent a huge sum of money on developing the movie so far, Weinstein did see how much this project meant to Jackson, and came up with an ultimatum in order for him to get the film made. Jackson had been working on the film for two years at this point, and he knew anyone who would see a Lord of the Rings movie that was only two hours long, with all the events condensed into a single film, would see that this was a poor attempt at adapting J.R.R. Tolkien's vision. Weinstein agreed to let Jackson try his luck with other studios, as he could see how much the project meant to him. However, Weinstein had made very clear demands to other studios developing the movie. If Jackson was to make these movies with another studio, he needed to get the funding to make two movies and not just one, and the studio would need to write Weinstein a cheque for $20 million to cover the costs that he had already accrued. Jackson also only had one month to complete these tasks. Jackson and team had pre-production material, so rather than just go to other studios with a traditional pitch, they created what he described as a making of the Lord of the Rings documentary, which they could show off to the Hollywood studios, in order to better show off their vision of what the Lord of the Rings could be. Jackson made appointments with Hollywood studios, but wasn't able to get any one interested enough to back the project. Jackson only had one meeting left with New Line Cinema. Jackson did say when speaking with New Line, he pretended to have other appointments to show the project to other studios in order to drum up interest. If they believed other studios might pick up on this project, then New Line Cinema may buy it just to spite the others if they feel like other studios see this vision. Jackson showed the 36-minute documentary he had produced to New Line Cinema head Robert Shea who simply just watched the documentary, he did say to Jackson before the meeting that if this didn't work out, he would be happy to take other pictures from him in the future. Robert Shea didn't make any comments during the 36-minute documentary that Jackson had presented him. At the end of the film that he'd been shown, Shea said to Jackson, Now why would anyone make this as two films? Jackson seemingly had lost all hope. But Shea said, this is three films. There are three books, right? There should be three films. And like that, the Lord of the Rings trilogy was born. Because of the initial two-movie story Jackson had developed, the script needed to be rewritten to turn the project from two movies into three movies. Ultimately, this paid off a great deal. I can't imagine how different the Lord of the Rings would have been had it been two movies instead of a trilogy. I do believe that Jackson would have done a decent job on two movies though, but everything seems to have fallen into place so we got the perfect trilogy. Even with all the passion and the skill on the set of making the movies, two movies probably would have felt too crowded and we would have lost so much of what made these movies special. The Lord of the Rings trilogy went on to be a critical and financial hit. Fellowship of the Ring was nominated for 13 Oscars and won four, and generated $883 million at the global box office. The Two Towers was nominated for six Oscars and won two, and generated $948 million at the global box office. Finally, The Return of the King had a clean sweep at the Oscars, winning all of their 11 nominations, as well as making $1.156 billion at the global box office. It's fair to say Harvey Weinstein really screwed up in wanting to make this one movie. Despite his lack of vision on what the films would be, he ultimately remained on the films as an executive producer across the trilogy and would have greatly benefited from the success of these movies. As Weinstein was known to be a bully when producing these films, Peter Jackson reportedly added stuff in the film to make fun of the producer. According to actor Elijah Wood, who portrayed Frodo Baggins in the trilogy, the orc Captain Gothmog, who appears in The Return of the King, was designed to look like the producer Harvey Weinstein and if you compare the two, the resemblance is uncanny. Another dig at Harvey Weinstein and his producing partner and brother Bob was seen in the end credits for The Return of the King. 
During the end credits, the cast are seen in illustrations of the characters they played, but crew members are accompanied by illustrations of other parts from the movies. When the Weinsteins appear in the credits, their illustrations were of two trolls. The Lord of the Rings trilogy is a masterpiece, and the thought that Weinstein could have prevented these films from happening is heartbreaking. It turned out alright in the end though. If you enjoyed this video or any of my content, I would ask you to subscribe and click the bell icon to receive notifications for all of my videos, as well as giving this video a like as it helps this channel grow. That's it for now, thanks for tuning in.